Okay, here's a topic we need to talk about. It just keeps coming up and people keep getting bit in the butt. And I'm going to give you the way to handle this. So what is this? I'm going to talk about taxis in particular, but it applies across the board. One thing that you will notice when you arrive, and you already noticed if you're here, is that when you go into a restaurant, yes, I know I said taxis, but I'm going to get to that. When you go into a restaurant, you sit down um, and you order and you eat and nobody comes to your table and nobody brings you a bill. And very often, if it's an El Merzo, uh, excluding the gringo higher price places, but a local place, you don't necessarily even know how much you're going to pay. So you sit down, you eat, uh, you don't always know what you're going to pay and they don't bring you a bill. So what happens? What do you do? You ask for the bill. They won't bring it to you. There is this thing about money that's almost like money is dirty. You don't want to talk about money. Money isn't to be discussed. And it's kind of funny because, you know, when the gringos come along and something's for sale, what's the first thing we say? How much? For them, locals, it's not how much. You know, that's the last thing you talk about. And even then you don't really want to talk about it. It's avoided. It's like it's the plague. It's like if they utter it, they're going to go to hell or something. So let's go to the taxi. Well, you're in Cuenca and you want to run to Azogi's and maybe you don't like buses. And I don't like buses. I've been to Azogi. I've lost track. Maybe six times. Maybe more. I don't know. Two times I took a bus. All the rest of the times I took a taxi. It was more than four times. So I must have gone to Azogi's more than six times. So I would get in a taxi and get to Azogi's. I'd pay the bill and we're good to go. Now, how did that transaction work? Well, the first time I got in a taxi and I said, how much to go to Azogi's? And he said, $20. I already knew that was about right. So on the meter, probably $15, $17, something like that. But long distances, you take other things to account and you usually just do a flat rate. So $20, let's go. We go, I pay the $20, everybody's happy. I get in a taxi to come back. How much to come back? $25. No, no, I'll pay you 20. Okay. And we come back, $20, everybody's happy. This happened several times. One time, it was early in the morning, I'm kind of tired, but mostly I was really preoccupied. I had a lot of thoughts in my head. And I got in the taxi and I told them Azogi's and we zip off to Azogi's. And we get there and I get out and I hand him $20 and he's no, $25. So what do you do? This is what you do. You pay the $25. Now, is he gouging me $5? Yeah, because pretty much everybody's charging $20. And if you went by the meter, it's actually less than that. So what's the deal? What, what happens with this? If I make sure of the price before we go, they will honor that price and there's no problem. And even if it was a, the most rip off can't be in the world if he agreed to that price. It's that price. I've yet to see them deviate from that. But if you get in the taxi and you don't establish the price, you have conceded that to him to be able to tell you what it is he wants. And you don't really have a leg to stand on. So <laughs> I gave him his $25. I wasn't mad at him. I was kicking myself in the butt because I know better than that. It was stupid. So I just kind of wasted $5. But it's a lesson to be learned. You make sure that if you're going to do that, if you're going to do anything, whatever it is, oh, I'm going to have curtains made because handmade curtains are relatively inexpensive here. You can go in and order the curtains and they'll make those curtains and you can pay the bill when you get there or you can establish a price. 
it won't usually happen automatically unless they're used to working with a lot of gringos. It won't happen automatically because of the way the culture is here and about discussing money. So it's on you to do that. Make sure that there's a clear understanding of what that transaction is going to be and they will honor that. But if you don't, you've left that door open. By far, most people here are very honorable and upright. However, when you leave something up in the air, you're leaving room for misunderstandings, you're leaving room for whatever. So, you know, and then you can walk away, you got hard feelings that you, maybe you feel they ripped you off. Maybe they think you're just being a cheap SOB. And, you know, let's avoid all of that. Let's just set the price. If you're not sure, ask. When you go into a restaurant and there's no prices around, they're just bringing you the lunch. Ask. Now, do I ask? No, I don't in those cases because I mean, how, how much can it be? It's anywhere from $2 to maybe at the outside $5. Anything more than that, you're going to be in a gringo establishment for lunch and they'll have a menu with prices defined. So, you know, that's so inconsequential, it doesn't really matter. But um, I think it matters to throw away $5 times two on a trip to Azogi's and back $10. I mean, maybe you have money to waste, money to burn. Um, maybe you don't. Whether you do or you don't, it's not good practice. I mean, you wouldn't just throw money away for nothing. So keep that in mind. And that's going to bring me to the second part of this. That's going to be... I'm sure upsetting to some people, but uh, I kind of have to get it off my chest because I am so sick to death of seeing this stuff in social media. It is amazingly condescending. It's, I don't know if you're gonna call it racist or bigoted, but it's to me, it's just disgusting. And that's this mentality about, oh, these poor little Ecuadorian people poor them they're so poor they're so suffering they need my little tips and if you don't tip you're just a selfish sob for not tipping and they need it and i'm sure they're grateful for it and these poor people after all they're living on 400 dollars a month give me a freaking break first of all that's completely bs are there some people living on $400 a month? Yeah, there are. But that figure comes from a government figure that, that sets a, a standard, absolute minimum subsistence uh, dollar amount. It's a benchmark. Very few people that I know, unless they're unemployed, live at that wage. To live at that wage, you're in abject poverty. And if you look around, I mean, I'm living on a street right in Cuenca. I'm looking out this window right now and the guy right across the street in his very nice chalet styled house has three automobiles, one, one truck, two cars, and they're all relatively new within the last couple of years. Every house on this street has cars in the driveway. Every house on the street has relatively nice new cars in the driveway. The only person on this street that doesn't have a car is me. I don't see those poor little Ecuadorians living on $400 a month here. I'm not living in Gringolandia. I'm not living uh, west of Las Americas, where you have all these mini mansions. I'm not living there. I'm living in the heart of Cuenca. I'm living in an Ecuadorian co community. There is one gringo that lives on the other side of my house, a lady that I don't know how long she's been here, a few years. Everybody else up and down this street, they're all Ecuadorian. You go to the cross streets, they're all Ecuadorian. There's no gringos really around here. And they're living well. 
as categories. You have a very large middle class in Ecuador. You have a substantial amount of wealthy people in Ecuador, including here in Cuenca. Who do you think mobs the mall? You go to Mall del Rio on a Saturday and it's packed wall to wall. Tens of thousands of people will be going through there buying overpriced dresses, overpriced sporting goods, bicycles that would be $120 in the United States and there's $600 here and they're buying them. Who's buying all this stuff? Why does that mall exist? Why is there Millennium Mall? What's going on here? Why do you have all of these overpriced fast food places? Why do you have all these very expensive restaurants? And expensive, I'm saying, if I go to Noa Sushi, for example. And if I get just a normal type meal, I'm probably going to drop 60 bucks. 120 bucks for two. That's not cheap. So who's supporting all these businesses? And I could go on and on with all these businesses. And I could go on and on about these neighborhoods. What's going on here? Why is it these poor Ecuadorian people need my handout? It's insulting. I hear over and over again about, oh, the poor taxi driver, give him an extra dollar. You know, the poor little guy, he needs it. He needs to go home and feed his family. I know quite a few taxi drivers. One in his own was a friend of mine. I saw him on a regular basis. He is far from that description. He owns rental properties that he makes money from. <laughs> he makes a substantial amount in his taxi. He's living a good life. He's making considerably more a month than I have. He's not some poor little taxi driver that needs your handout. He doesn't need your 50 cents and he should be oh so grateful. I'm not saying don't tip. I'm not, it's the attitude that goes with that. If, whenever it comes up about tipping on Facebook and you see this from time to time, it just it keeps reappearing. And you've got people that chime in about what a miserable human being you are if you don't tip and you don't tip substantially despite what the culture is. Now the culture is not really a tipping culture. It does come across almost like, oh poor you, here's some extra. That's the effect it has on many people. Now it is changing in places like Cuenca where you have so many gringos here that it's becoming kind of a standard. And as a matter of fact, in gringo restaurants, you'll even see a tip jar once in a while. You won't see that in a, in a local restaurant. But there are repercussions. If a gringo is going to tip, and the next gringo is going to tip in a taxi, and the next one is going to tip, when that guy comes driving along and he's got his choice, well, I've got a single mother with a child here and it's raining and I've got this gringo here with his touristy Panama hat on. I'm going to stop for the gringo and I'm going to bypass the local, even if she was first in line, because the gringo is probably going to tip me. And yeah, that's actually been happening. And that kind of creates some ill will. Do you think that mother who needed to get somewhere and she's standing in the rain with her child do you think she's really a fan of that so you know is it a big thing is it the end of the world no it's not but this attitude stinks it is not poor little ecuadorians and yeah there's poor in ecuador and you can find them but there's poor in the united states have you ever been to the appalachians i mean come on seriously there's poor everywhere in the world. There will be poor always. You know, I could get biblical. Jesus told Judas there would be poor always. You cannot eliminate the poor. You can do what you can. But assuming that the majority of the people in the country you came to live in are poor and pathetic and need your handout is ultimately 
an insult. So all those people that keep chiming in about, you know, $400 a month really need to really need to do some observation, some thinking, maybe actually talk to some people. Uh, you'll be amazed because clearly you're not aware of the reality. Think about how you would feel if where you lived, you had visitors and every visitor that came there patted you on the head and said, oh, you poor thing, here's a little extra for your family because I know you need it. Okay, so maybe you don't actually do that, but the attitude says that. Financial classes here exist like they exist in other places. There are poor. There are mostly middle class. There are filthy rich. So instead of going overboard and scolding others about all this that you've done for them, focus on people that actually need it. Okay, so I'm going to get off that rant. It just kind of gets under my skin. I apologize if that was a little heavy handed, but uh, you know, if you're coming here, I just want you to get a clear picture. This is not a po country of poverty ridden everybody's. Uh, and so when you come here, treat people like you would treat people anywhere. They're just people. You don't know their circumstances. You don't know from their clothes. I mean, how many times have you heard the story about the guy who goes into the car dealership and he looks at that Ferrari and he wants to buy it, but he's dressed like a bum so nobody wants to take care of him. And it turns out he's a multi-million out millionaire. I, I mean, think about that story when you're here. Stop assuming that people here are whatever it is. Start assuming that these people here are whatever they are, and you don't know what that is. And maybe you can explore what that is and find out and expand your life, expand your horizons, and get a better understanding of the people that you're dealing with. And if you learn from this person, you go to the next person, guess what? It's going to be a whole different story. The world is full of billions of stories, and they're all different like fingerprints. Ciao. You know you could.